Hey guys, it's Miss Peters. I'm making a quick video to go over the solubility curve worksheet that you submitted last week on Thursday before our test. There were um, a few questions that I saw that were commonly missed and I'm just going to go over all of them and hopefully fix any misunderstandings that you had. So number one, at what temperature does NH4Cl have a solubility of 60 grams in 100 grams of water. Well, it's important to note that this graph is about 100 grams of water. Um, it doesn't apply to this question, but for other questions, I might ask if it was in 50 grams of water or 200 grams of water, um, but that's not the case for this question. So NH4Cl, that line is it's right here. That is this line. And I want to know at what temperature does it have a solubility of 60 grams? That means at what temperature does 60 or do 60 grams dissolve in? And looking at that line, 60 grams is right here. Choo, 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 choo. So it's about right here where they connect and going down. That's like right at 70 degrees. Anywhere from 70 to 75 degrees would be fine 77 anywhere in that range 77 is kind of pushing it but I would have my answer choices on the test would be like 70 50 90 I wouldn't say 70 you know for 77 but somewhere in between there is where 60 grams dissolve Number two, which two substances have the same solubility at 95 degrees Celsius? That means at 95 degrees Celsius, which two substances dissolve the same amount? And this was the most missed question. I think um, it, it was a very highly missed one. So 95 is like right here and when I draw my line up, these two lines intersect right at 95 degrees, but it's important to look at what lines those are. So it's this one right here, which is KCl, and then it's this curved one, which is KClO3. A lot of people wrote KCl and NaCl. I'm going to trace the NaCl line in blue. Sodium chloride is this one. Now with the name here, it can get confusing and make you think it's that curved line, but it's not. It is the almost flat line. Number three, if 115 grams of KNO3 are added to 100 grams of water at 50 degrees Celsius, how many grams do not dissolve okay so let's find potassium nitrate it is this one and we're talking about 50 degrees so at 50 degrees boop, it is right there at 50 degrees 80 grams dissolve And I know 80 grams dissolves because that's where the line for 50 hits. So if I put in 115 grams, now this question is not saying it's super saturated. It wants to know how many grams wouldn't dissolve. So 115 minus 80, 35 grams would not dissolve. Now, if I had said they all dissolved then the answer would be none because it would be super saturated but that's not the case here number four 40 grams of KCl are dissolved in hundred grams of water at 45 degrees Celsius okay so we've got 40 grams of KCl at 45 how many additional grams of KCl are needed to make the solution saturated at 80 degrees Celsius so let's find our KCl line right here. So it is this line. Um, I put in 40 grams at 45. That honestly, the 45 doesn't matter. So I want to know how many grams additionally we need 
at 80 degrees. So we're going to look at this line. Where does it hit at 80? And so at 80, KCL is right at 50 grams. It may be 49 is the right answer, but 50 is a good rounded number. So you have already put in 40. It needs 50 grams. So 50 minus 40, you would need to add 10 more grams to get that solution to be saturated. Because with 40 grams in it at 80 degrees, it is unsaturated. Okay, number five. What is the solubility of potassium iodide at five degrees Celsius? What is the solubility? That just means how much can dissolve. I saw some weird answers for that question. And so potassium iodide is Ki up here and it's this line. Okay, and at five degrees, which is halfway right here, woo, do, 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 do. Um, about anywhere from like 135 grams looks like a good answer. I'm not looking for exact numbers. That's a very good estimate. Maybe it's 133, 134. It doesn't really matter. If you said 100, that's obviously wrong. Anywhere from 130 to 140, I would take. Although I would say 130 is wrong and 140 is definitely wrong, but somewhere in between those values. So when I, if you see a question, what's the solubility? That just means how much of it can dissolve. Number six, what is the mass of potassium chloride that will dissolve in 50 grams of water at 70 degrees Celsius? So this graph is about 100 grams of water. So if you have half as much water, you're only gonna be able to dissolve half as much. But let's figure out how much would dissolve in 100. So potassium chloride, that's KCl, which is this line right here. And at 70 degrees, make sure I got my pen, it is right here. About 45 grams can dissolve in 100 grams of water. And so if we lowered the water, we cut the water in half, to 50 grams, that gets divided by two. Well, let's divide, you just divide the amount that gets dissolved by two. And 45 divided by two is, good question, about 22.5 grams. And so if I ask you about 50 grams of water, you just divide the amount in half. If I said it was 200 grams of water, you would multiply it by two. Um, yeah, so you lower the water, the amount that can be dissolved gets lowered as well. Number seven, uh, now number seven is really tricky. I am not gonna ask you one like this on the test, but I am gonna go over it. So a saturated solution of potassium chlorate is dissolved in 250 grams of water. If the saturated solution is cooled from 90 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius, how many grams of precipitate will be formed? That means how many grams will no longer be dissolved? Okay. So first, let's look at the graph. Potassium chlorate is right here, and it is this line. So it's cooled from 90 degrees to 60 degrees. Well, 90 degrees, it is right here, a little below 50, maybe like 49. I think, yeah, I said 49 on the answer key. It's not right at 50, so at 90 degrees. 49 grams can be dissolved at 60 degrees. That is about 25 grams can be dissolved. So when I cool it, how many grams will no longer be dissolved? 
you had 49 grams dissolved, but now only 25 grams can be dissolved because the solution cooled. And so to figure out how many grams are no longer dissolved or your precipitate, 49 minus 25. That is 24 grams, but that is for 100 grams of water. I wanted to know if it was in 250 grams of water. And so like number six, we're gonna have to set up a proportion. So 24 grams would no longer be dissolved if it was 100 grams of water. And we'll set up a proportion if it was 250 grams of water. Now, how do you go from 100 to 250? Multiply by 2.5. And so to find this answer, I'm gonna multiply 24 by 2.5. And when I do that, 60. So 60 grams of precipitate would be formed. Now again, that is a really tricky question. I might ask you about 250 grams of water, um, but I'm not gonna ask you how much would be formed. I realized after I made the answer key and already given this to you, mm, that wasn't the best question and I do apologize. It's hard changing stuff from in person to online. And then last, um, under the following conditions, is the solution saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated? Okay. A, 20 grams of NaCl are added to 100 grams of water at 80 degrees Celsius. NaCl is this flat line right here, and at 80 degrees, it is right here at 40 grams. So if I added 20 grams, 20 would be down here, that's below the line, it would be unsaturated. You could dissolve more because it can have 40. Uh, B, at 90 degrees Celsius, I'm gonna erase this. At 90 degrees Celsius, 70 grams of potassium chlorate is dissolved in 100 grams of water. Potassium chlorate is KClO3. And at 90 degrees, that is right at 50 grams. So if I dissolved 70 grams, and the key word for this is it says all 70 grams dissolved. That is way up here. That is above the line. And the key word is that I said they all dissolved. So they all dissolved, it is super saturated because it has more dissolved than it should. It should only have like 50 grams dissolved, but it has 70 grams, so it is super saturated. You will see a lot of, well, not a lot, like two questions on the test that are very similar to number eight. Also, you'll see questions that are very similar to number six. And so you might want to make a note of that for your test. I hope this helped. Go just so you can better understand reading solubility curves. As always, if you have any extra questions, please let me know and I will do my best to help.